take a look at all these sweet potatoes growing in this green stalk original vertical garden that is one nice size bed of sweet potatoes guten yardening everybody well today's video focuses in on one of our absolute favorite vegetables here at guten yardening you can see them they're actually all around me right now that's our sweet potatoes now last season we did a team potato versus team sweet potato kind of competition that culminated in a really nice giveaway at the end of the season and we're going to get this started right now with a team sweet potato video so we're going to give you a tour of our sweet potatoes we're going to show you the different varieties we have growing we're going to show you the ways that we're growing them in terms of the layout we have a lot different this year and in fact we made it our goal to grow way more sweet potatoes than we ever have before but i've got lots to share with you in this video some really interesting bits of information in my opinion so let's go ahead and get started and take a look at our sweet potatoes here at guten yardening and if you're on team sweet potato let us know it in the comments just hashtag team sweet potato now the starting point of our tour is going to be right where i was just standing with our Stokes purple sweet potatoes. The Stokes purple sweet potatoes that you see behind me, and this is a three by six raised bed, so 18 square feet of sweet potatoes all came from one store-bought sweet potato, an organic sweet potato that we bought a couple of months ago. And so we were able to fit about 24 slips in this 18 square foot bed. Now that's a little bit closer spacing, and you're gonna find that theme pretty repetitive throughout what we're doing in our video today, that we're planting these closer than is typically suggested in terms of the vining and the bush type sweet potatoes that we're growing. But we're trying our best to see what that fine line is to maximize the use of space and also maximize the growth. But this variety out of all the ones that we planted this year so far is doing the best, it's growing the fastest and one of the interesting things about these sweet potatoes is that when I planted them, all I did was to cut them directly off the sweet potato and I didn't even put them in water to sprout roots. And yet they survived perfectly well. In fact, you can see they are thriving even after that planting. So hopefully that helps you understand that while we almost always let our sweet potato slips sprout roots before we put them in the ground and raise beds or in vertical gardens, you can still find success even if you don't do that. Now for each of the last two years, we have grown purple sweet potatoes, although those have always been our purple passion sweet potatoes. So this is our first time trying this Stokes purple, but we love the fact that they have a pretty unique taste. You can see the hardware cloth that we've put down to try to prevent any vole damage in this bed. This was like vole city last year. Uh, but the purple sweet potatoes also have those wonderful anthocyanins that are supposed to be so beneficial to you. Look at the quality of the leaves on this. This bed is absolutely packed. Again, all of this. Let me see if I can get zoomed out a little bit here so you can see the overview. All of this from one single store-bought sweet potato. And in this whole bed, right now I'm seeing a grand total of one weed. That's not too shabby. Now I just talked about roots and that reminds me of something that I wanna show you really quickly. So these are sweet potatoes that we've planted just in a little mix that we created. And we planted those sweet potatoes there. These are the ones that we were growing our own slips from. And you can see there's still some really nice growth here one of the things we love about sweet potatoes is that wonderful curb appeal. So these are up on our porch and I'll come over here and show you some of the other ones that we're growing. But these are up here providing both curb appeal and the slips are still growing. So if we want to overwinter some and grow indoors again like we did last season, or if we want to take off of here and plant some more from our own sweet potato harvest, then we can. So this year's sweet potato slips that we planted came from two places. Some of them came from the sweet potatoes that we harvested last season and then propagated slips from. Like this Stokes Purple Sweet Potato, which after pulling 24 slips off of is still growing in this potting mix that we put it in, still producing slips. But we actually set a bigger goal this season than we could accomplish just by propagating our own sweet potato slips. We decided that we wanted to try to grow as close to a thousand pounds of sweet potatoes as possible. And so in order to do that, we also purchased 
about 500 sweet potato slips. But I wanna show you something that I noticed just recently about the difference between the roots on the slips that we purchased and the ones that we start here at Guten Yarden. All right, I'm gonna be showing you two different varieties of sweet potato slips. This is a Georgia Jet slip that we purchased. Now we've kept this in water and I'll put it back in there once I'm done with this, but you can see the roots here. There are actually quite a few of them, but they're not all that big. So compare that to this Hannah sweet potato slip that we propagated, and this has been in water for about a week and a half. But take a look at the difference between the two. The roots on the ones that we've propagated ourselves are, they seem to be a little bit fewer, but they are absolutely massive in comparison to the ones that we purchased. And that seems to be regardless of sweet potato variety that we're seeing that difference. We'd love to hear in the comments why you think there is such a substantial difference in root size. All right, I mentioned that we bought 500 slips and we divided those 500 into four different varieties. And we based that decision on the fact that we had grown all four of these varieties before, we love the taste of every one of these, and we've done well with them in the past. And all four of those varieties are planted in this 32 foot long raised bed. So we've got 32 feet by about three feet in width and four different varieties, so just over 100 plants in this bed. All right, the four varieties of sweet potatoes that we purchased slips for this year were Vardaman, Georgia Jet, Centennial, and Beauregard. Out of those four, three of them are vining types. Vardaman is the only one that is considered to be a bush type sweet potato. You know, having all four of these varieties side by side has made it kind of interesting to see how well they would grow in comparison to each other. So down at the end here, we have our Vardaman, which is our bush variety. And I actually put it down at this end of the bed because we have the least amount of walking space on the other side. Now Vardaman has a really nice bright orangish red flesh and these take about a hundred days. In fact, you're gonna see that all the sweet potato varieties that we're growing this year should be varieties that take about a hundred to 110 days, regardless of if they're a bush variety or if they are a vining variety. And you can see the way we've put this in this bed and we'll do a very full video on this when we get to harvest time, but we created a black plastic, a food safe black plastic over top of a very mounded raised bed. So while we planted these really close together, you can see the spacing in here is about 10 or 11 inches in between each variety. While they're pretty closely packed together, and I said I'd be bringing that back, what you should notice is that they have tons of depth because the medium that I added into this bed and I worked really hard to get a whole bunch of really nice, lightweight, loose growing material in here. This is a combination of organic compost, peat moss, coco cure, perlite. It's really nice, lightweight, well-draining mix and there's at least 13, 14 inches of depth of that mix added on top of our native soil. After about eight feet of vardaman, we come to our Georgia Jet variety, which is actually the slowest growing out of all of the sweet potato slips that we put in this bed. You can see this hasn't filled out nearly as much as a lot of the other sweet potatoes in here. And it really looks like it's just starting to take off. This is also the one where I had to replace the most slips. They just seem to struggle to survive more than any of the other varieties. The Georgia Jet sweet potato is another orange sweet potato. It does tend to be, at least in our case, what our experience is, a little smaller than a lot of the other varieties that we grow. But I did a taste test video on seven different sweet potato varieties last year. And I definitely pointed out that it was a sweet, really great tasting, not very fibrous sweet potato. So nice and soft. It doesn't have a, it's not like that starchy feel that some sweet potatoes have. And next up is what I think many people in the U.S. refer to as the go-to sweet potato, and that's the Centennial sweet potato. Last year was the first year that we grew Centennial sweet potatoes, and they were huge. Actually, the end product of the Centennial may have been one of the biggest producers for us, and I think that's one of the things that the Centennial is known for. It's really nice, really sweet, not very starchy, but quite a vigorous producer. And I think that's why a lot of people love growing them. And out of the four varieties in this bed, this is definitely the most aggressive grower. It has spread. The leaves on this are massive, huge leaves, 
hopefully that means that what's happening below the surface here is going to be some grape production in this bed. And the last eight feet in this bed is taken up with some Beauregard sweet potatoes, which is another really nice producer. It's another vine type sweet potato. You can actually see the sweet potato slips that I had to replace a little bit later. Just what a difference. And this, this has been in the ground for about two weeks longer than this one. And you can see what a difference that two weeks makes. But this is another one of those really nice kind of reddish orange skin potatoes, sweet potatoes. I didn't show this variety in our sweet potato taste test, even though we grew them and have grown them the last two years. But this is another one that I really like the taste of. Well, what you just saw there was over a hundred square feet of raised bed space dedicated to sweet potatoes. I didn't point out the fact that we also had peppers growing along the edges of those beds and tomatoes growing at each one of the trellises, but we can save that for a different garden tour. This is another raised bed where it's a 12 by two foot raised bed, so 24 square feet. And we have a combination of tomatoes and more of those same varieties of sweet potatoes growing. So we're dedicating quite a bit of space, quite a bit of raised bed space to sweet potatoes, but of course, that's not the extent of it. In addition to those lush raised beds, we're also using some of our creative DIY vertical gardens and our green stalks to grow even more sweet potatoes. This four foot tall vertical garden made out of a concrete mesh tomato cage may be one of my favorite DIYs we've ever done. So all around the bottom, and this is a combo garden, all around the bottom, the entire circumference of this circle, we have really nice sweet potatoes growing. And on top of that, team potato, don't get too excited, but we have a whole bunch of potatoes growing. So our focus is sweet potatoes today. I won't spend any more time on those potatoes, but this is one of three DIY vertical gardens. And there are two others, these two, which are now wrapped in that food safe black plastic. This is three and a half mil black plastic. That black plastic is the main difference. Inside of this, we have from the top to the base of this bed, we have hay and a little bit of a soil mix, a potting mix in here. And we have sweet potatoes growing in all three. Now, one thing to keep in mind, you see the coloration of these sweet potatoes. I've added some nitrogen in the form of fish emulsion. And normally I don't wanna to give too much nitrogen to our sweet potatoes, but I think there's still some composting happening with some of the hay in here. And so these need to be shored up in terms of the amount of nitrogen in here to help them grow. But being over here by this vertical garden also gives me the opportunity to show you a couple of the other varieties that we are growing from our harvest last season because this bed has a nice mixture this is the japanese red sweet potato this one which has the most unique leaves my favorite leaves this is an okinawan sweet potato which is white outside and gets a kind of purplish white flesh inside really cool and then down here we have some hannah sweet potatoes hannah sweet potatoes are one of the original favorites, one of the starchiest varieties, I think that we grow kind of a drier sweet potato, but really nice cooking. Now, over the winter, we experimented around with growing sweet potatoes indoors in our green stalk vertical garden. And I said at the time that I thought natural sunlight would probably help our cause quite a bit. Take a look at all these sweet potatoes growing in this green stalk original vertical garden. These are just now really starting to take off. All right, we got sweet potatoes growing in our raised beds. We got sweet potatoes growing in our vertical gardens. We've also got them growing in ground in two different places. This is our vardaman, our bush variety growing here in our front yard in space. This is one of my favorite looking beds. There's just something about it. Look at the shape of this bed. There's something about that shape I really like. And last year's harvest from our native soil, and this is our native soil mounted with a little bit of that organic purple cow compost, our harvest was a little bit more difficult than in the raised beds, but the size of those sweet potatoes last year was fantastic. And we're hoping, I mean, based on how good this looks right now, we're hoping for another great harvest out of this bed. The other area where we planted over 70 sweet potato slips is at our community garden. Now, I don't want to spoil too much or reveal too much from over there. So the footage that you're seeing right now is from a couple of weeks ago. Now by volume two square footage, I think the biggest production we ever had 
was our sweet potatoes that we grew in these really nice food safe black plastic containers. Now depending on the container these are either 17 or 18 gallon containers and we have 10 of them packed with these sweet potatoes. Here's some more of that Okinawan sweet potato and we have container after container and in each container regardless of variety I've noticed some really nice growth in the last couple of days. Part of that probably because we're finally getting a little bit of rain at least it seems like we are. I also noticed the beginnings of the Japanese beetles. They just started showing up about three days ago. And here are four more containers right beside the Stokes purple sweet potato. But I'm really hopeful that the Japanese beetles don't show up in mass this year. I've seen lots of grubs though, so that's not a great sign. We are seeing lots of different varieties, lots of different ways that we're planting. The last one I want to show you is that we once again have sweet potatoes growing in our hay bales. And all of these hay bales, and I do mean hay, I don't mean straw, all of these hay bales are second year hay bales, so they've had a little time to start decomposing, to start breaking down. And I'm hopeful that these bales, which are in the front of our house, which have loosened up a little bit because they've started to break down, I'm hoping that these produce a little bit more than they did last year. Last year, these were so compact that we weren't able to get much production out of them. But this year, hopefully a different story. Well, Team Sweet Potato, as I sit here in front of our Greenstalk sweet potatoes, I gotta say, we've set some pretty lofty goals for ourselves in terms of sweet potato production. So I wanna know what you think. Which growing method is your favorite? Which sweet potato variety do you enjoy growing the most? And again, if you're on Team Sweet Potato, go ahead and throw hashtag Team Sweet Potato down in the comments. We can't wait for the future sweet potato harvests that are coming our way. Well, if you enjoyed today's video and found it informative, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.